After all these months of waiting, tank watchers in Boca Chica and elsewhere finally have something to get really excited about, both the multiple static fires which happened recently and also this unprecedented 22nd static fire. This one has really got a lot of people talking and a lot of speculation going because SpaceX generally doesn't conduct 22nd static fires fires, not on the Falcon 9, not on the Raptor 1s either. They never conducted any static fire like this with any of their previous engines unless the engine happens to be sitting on the stand. So why is SpaceX doing this? I mean, their general static fires are just a brief burst of flame and that's about the end of it. Really, that's been all of their static fires. Well, Elon Musk had something to say about it. But in addition, I think that SpaceX had a lot of other data to gather which could only be accomplished by a longer duration burn. And on top of that, they have finally announced a launch window, at least to the government, as to when they anticipate that Starship will be taking to orbit. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut and this is... So as most of us know by now, Elon Musk gave us a cryptic time frame for the first orbital launch of Starship somewhere between 1 and 12 months. I actually made a video about that, speculating that perhaps he had it in mind to try to launch Starship once a month until he finally got it right, hoping, however, that he would proceed with a lot more caution, culminating in a much safer launch attempt sometime closer to the 12th month window. However, recently SpaceX submitted a radio spectrum license application to the Federal Communications Commission, which gives us an important clue as to when they really intend to send Starship to orbit. The window begins on September 1st, which means no, we're not going to be trying to launch Starship this month, surprise, surprise, and it ends six months after that. That gives us until the end end of February before Starship will be attempting an orbital launch. Now, in my opinion, the last three tests that have taken place are a strong indication that SpaceX is probably going to be attempting this launch sometime in late 2022 or more likely in early 2023. They are being very cautious, very slow, and very methodical. In my opinion, the reason they're being so cautious is because of the explosion that they experienced while trying to spin up all 33 engines at once in an earlier test that very well might have blown B7 sky high and much of the surrounding landscape. Now they're proceeding with tests with a lot more caution and really this is the way they should have been doing it from the beginning again in my humble opinion. By the way, please subscribe to Lab Padre please subscribe to Mars Embassy. They are very generous in providing me with this awesome footage. But why this 20-second burn? Well, according to Elon Musk, it was to conduct what's called an autogenous pressure test. What the hell does that mean? Well, the vast majority of rocket engines use different types of gases, usually inert gases like helium, in order to maintain pressure while the engine is burning. However, the Raptor and a few other types of engines don't require the addition of a different type of gas in order to maintain pressure. It just utilizes the methane and oxygen it uses in order to provide thrust to also maintain pressure. Although this does reduce weight and simplifies some things, it's also extremely difficult to maintain pressure without utilizing an inert gas like helium. So Elon's explanation 
explanation does make sense. However, I do have one question. If it's so important to test this type of pressure, why didn't they do it with Raptor 1, which operates on the same principle? In my opinion, they were testing out a wide variety of factors with this long duration burn, not just the pressure. And that all makes sense because once again, we're talking about untested engines or at least engines that have never flown before and the most powerful rocket in human history. In some ways, I think we can regard this long duration burn as kind of a mini green run. That is to say that they were testing a variety of different subsystems, the propulsion system components, thrust vector controls perhaps, and also simulating the impact of full thrust on the core stage. Now, of course, they were only using one engine, but it's a pretty easy process to multiply the impact of this one engine by 33 in order to determine whether or not the structural integrity of the booster is going to hold up under full thrust. Once again, yes, they have simulated the hell out of this, but that doesn't mean that their simulations are completely correct. There are so many factors that need to be taken into account in order to determine whether or not the core stage and all of the systems inside it are going to hold up under 16 million pounds worth of thrust. Let me say that again, 16 million pounds worth of thrust. Saturn V only had 7.6 million pounds worth of thrust. SLS had only 8.8 .8 million pounds. The N1 only had a hair over 10 million pounds. This thing is insanely powerful, and with great power comes great responsibility. And yes, you can all groan now, but in this case, it's absolutely true. And this is something that is really starting to bother me right now. As a matter of fact, it's pissing me off. I seem to be the only one who's talking about the potential consequences of a failed test with something this powerful. I'm the only one who's talking about N1. For example, UniverseToday.com, and by the way, I really like them when they were commenting about Elon's statements about a successful orbital flight is probably between 1 and in 12 months from now, they said, quote, the word successful is undoubtedly emphasized because any inaugural space flight, the learning curve is immense and accidents are known to happen. The length of this window suggests that Musk is anticipating that the initial attempt may not succeed and that SpaceX will have to make further attempts with other fully loaded and stacked prototypes, unquote. Nobody is talking about what happened with failed attempts with N1. Now, granted, if Starship were to blow up three or four kilometers up in the atmosphere, that's not going to be a big deal. However, if it blows up a couple hundred meters off the pad, the consequences are going to be nothing short of cataclysmic, at least if it blows up with anything resembling the kind of force that N1 did. And yeah, I know you're sick of hearing about this, and yeah, I know that there are people who say that liquid methane isn't going to produce anywhere near the kind of explosion that the kerosene inside N1 did, but keep in mind, only 15% of N1's fuel actually exploded, and it had less than 3,000 tons worth of fuel, whereas Starship has over 4,600 tons worth of fuel. Somehow, I tend to think that a full-fledged explosion on the pad is going to be very similar and going to have significant consequences. That having been said, though, I'm not going to end this on a gloomy note at all because SpaceX isn't stupid and they are well aware of this, especially given the last anomaly on the pad. That's why they're proceeding with extreme caution. That's why they're doing this one engine at a time. Long duration burns with only one engine and that's why it's going to be several months before we see a full-fledged orbital flight attempt. 
So as I've been saying all along, SpaceX is doing this properly, they're going to be successful, and Starship is going to fly. And when it does fly, it's going to change the face of human space flight forever. It just may not fly as fast as all of us want it to, but all of us can learn to be patient. Please check out the description for ways to support my content. Also, please hit that notification bell. It's very important to my channel. And as always, stay angry about space!